It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today I'm going to be having a look at switch filming. What exactly it is uh, in a very light way and an example of potentially what switch filming can do for you. So I want to say thank you to Idyllic Made Accessories. Uh, they provided me the actual switch films that I'm going to be using today. They actually sent me these a really, really long time ago, so I don't know if these switch films are their version 1 or version 2 switch films, but it doesn't matter because the theory is exactly the same. Now, Idyllic also made a fantastic video on switch filming, why do we do it, and examples of the difference that switch filming makes, and I'm going to have that hopefully carded somewhere on the video there. So if you haven't seen it, please go check them out because I'm sure it's going to be a much better video than this. But I'm doing this video for my own experience and my thoughts about that simply because while I know about it, if I don't do it myself, I don't have that first-hand experience on switch filming, which would be, you know, a bit unfortunate if I want to be knowledgeable in this space without having done it myself. So the concept of switch filming is pretty simple. You have a switch, it wobbles, and you open it up and you put a, a film in there so when you close up the housing, it reduces the wobble. Well, how does it do that? It essentially acts as a, a shim. The wobble in the housing can be caused by poor tolerances from manufacturing or it can be from wear and tear of opening your switches a lot because you're stretching or distending the actual housing plastic causing it to lose its tolerances. Now, switch wobble is really two part and I'm going to switch over to show you what's going on and how we're going to be uh, looking at it. So here's my switch tester and not switch tester but my switch collection and I actually went through and I wobbled a whole bunch of switches because I was looking for something that actually had notably moving housing. And the switches that I actually ended up choosing to do this short demonstration on is the Novel Key Cream switch, which are these two down here right in front of my auxiliary camera that I've got sitting at the desktop level. So I've got some fine tweezers and I've got two films. They're exactly the same thickness according to the Keyboard Treehouse. They should be 0.15 millimeter thick. I don't actually have uh, my caliper set up so I can't really measure that but you know putting them side by side and checking their heights they're exactly the same height there's no reason for me to not believe that value so I'm going to switch over now to that front facing camera and that's what you're seeing right now so I've got two cream switches they're facing in the same orientation they came to me in the same batch so you know theoretically they should be manufactured the same and they've never been mounted in a keyboard before, they've never been soldered, and they've never been opened. Okay, I have to stress very, very clearly, I have not opened these. So these are factory, and for those who know me, I don't lube my switches normally, so that's the other factor on why I haven't opened them. Now, switch wobble comes in two things, which is one, which is how much the actual stem moves, and that's a tolerance thing because you can see that there's gaps between the housing and the stem that allows that to wobble. <clears throat> so you can see there's a bit of wobble there. But the second equation to the wobble is the housing, because if the housing wobbles, as the stem wobbles, <clears throat> the housing will move with it, and it increases the degree of movement and freedom that you get in your wobble. So if you look at it very, very carefully, as I'm moving the stem, the top housing is also wobbling left to right, very fractionally, but it's there. And if I repeat that on this one, you can also see that it is actually visibly noticeable. The bottom isn't moving at all, it's nice and snug in the actual plate, but the housing is actually it's moving right so that's that's the housing wobble that we're talking about so I'm satisfied that the degree of movement between these two is pretty much close enough 
And you can even hear it squeak because this pom on pom housing on the creams actually like you can see the feet the little legs on this left hand side protrude past the housing and then can wobble back to be flush with the bottom housing that's how much movement these actual housings have so the concept is really simple you get the sheet and you peel off the outside rectangle you open the switch and you sit it over the top and then you snap it back together and that extra thickness that shim is meant to help the legs hook in harder against the housing and reduce the amount of wobble right that's the theory now there's thin films and there's thick films because they can be applied to slightly different housings made by different manufacturers that have different levels of tolerances <clears throat> and idyllic's video on that is really great at showing that and demonstrating that so what we're going to do is this one on the left hand side we're going to leave it as it is and this one on the right hand side i'm going to crack it open and we are going to film it with one of these two switch films well with one of these two colors of switch films assuming i can even get it out and there we go pop that out okay so i'm just using my uh, b stock switch opener one of these babies gonna get that in and yep, and the top has come off now I can probably do something fancy maybe uh, will that let me okay so there you go so I've just gone and opened that up now I realize that that's not gonna work very well there we go okay so I'm just gonna open that up again for you for those who like watching switches getting opened maybe it's really snug okay there we go so just going to snap that back together so how these switch openers work uh, is they've just got the prongs struggling to get focus there we go uh, and the switch will sit on top still struggling to get focus probably because there's too much stuff going on in the background maybe that'll help maybe not hmm okay there we go we've got some focus there and as you push down on that it'll get in under the tabs and then the top comes off right so if you're noticing these kind of switch openers and you're new to the game that's how these work right so top housing comes off and for ease I'm just going to take out the stem and I'm going to take out the spring don't want to lose those and you'll see the actual profile of the bottom housing now will match effectively how that pattern is right so the cutout there allows you to still have your LEDs and your uh, light coming through the bottom of that switch so I'm going to take my very fine scientific forceps here I'm going to try and peel one of these blue guys off okay so there it is and I'm going to sit it over like that in theory since I've never done this before okay so it's going to sit over the bottom of the switch something like that now these are adhesive so they will stick down once you've actually got it in place and you apply sufficient pressure on them a little bit fiddly but not too bad uh, I'm not going to say that I have perfect alignment on this because I'm very, you know, noob to this. But you'll see the end result there is that that crossbar should sit across the crossbar and it sits all the way around the outside. And all it's doing is adding that 0.15 of a millimeter thickness in between the housing. 
So now let's reassemble. Switch goes back on. Stem in the right orientation, facing the leaf. And then we need to close it up. So just on top. And we'll pull it out. And we will snap that shut. If it will snap shut. Okay, so now it doesn't have that characteristic snap. And what you can see here is that the legs are not wanting to go down. You can see how they're sticking out the sides. And it's because that fraction of a millimeter, that 1.5, is enough against the tolerances that it's struggling to close in. So I'm really going to squeeze it down. And yep, I've got one leg. That one still doesn't want to go in. The other side's lifting. OK, so we're getting there. We are. Right. So with a little bit of careful force and manipulation, I have managed to get all four legs in. So you'll see that they're now actually sitting in and flush, although that one's starting to lift. It wants to come out. You can see it's just protruding out of that. But it tells me it's really tight. It's really super snug. So the question is, how much difference does that make well, once I put it back into the plate? And let's bring that down. The chaos that is my room, my desk, my setup. OK. You're going to focus. There we go. OK, so you can see that film is now there. And let's try and wobble it. Now, the housing doesn't want to move at all. It's super tight, so much so that it's sliding in the plate. And of course, the stem shouldn't be terribly affected by it. The stem still does its same wobble. But now, if I try and push it with the housing, the whole switch is moving with it. Whereas the control one here, the housing is still wobbling. The stem is wobbling by itself, but then the housing is wobbling with it. So that's the difference that switch filming will make to switches. Now this is stock, as I said, and it is one of the more expensive, I guess, switches out there compared to say, you know, the cheap Gatoron switches and things like that. And its manufacturing tolerances give it a little bit of wobble. But now that I've actually put in that switch film, it's got no housing wobble, but the stem still wobbles. So you have to be aware of that. It's very important to be aware of that. The tolerances in the gaps is going to be your primary wobble from the stem. No matter how tight the housing is, if you have a lot of gap here in the actual stem to housing, you're still going to experience that wobble. It's just that if the housing is very loose, that wobble is accentuated further because the housing will wobble and allow more play for the stem to wobble in its maximum directions. Okay? So, you know, there's a, a Gatoron yellow there, and if I try and rock it, it doesn't go anywhere. It, like, seriously, the housing, the entire switch moves. So their tolerances on that factory switch were pretty good. Um, that is switch filming in a nutshell. What difference it'll make for you, if any, and how easy it is to actually film. It's just time consuming, right? It's just time consuming. You've got to open your switches, you've got to peel the switch film off the sticker sheet, you've got to line it up, and then you've got to be able to snap and push those uh, tops back together. I'm a little bit sad that it is kind of wasteful in a way because then you're still left with all these little squares of uh, a vinyl or whatever the material sheeting is. If you can find something uh, to use them for, I don't know, artistically or decoratively, then that's fantastic. If not, you know, it's unfortunate. But uh, that's the price you pay for having filmed 
switches. So there you go. Now you can get these idyllic switch films from the Keyboard Treehouse uh, if they are in stock. I don't know what their stock levels are right now, but um, just having a look and seeing what is... Um, that's what it is. Idyllic switch films, 875 USD plus shipping for a 105 film. So that'll be enough to do a full-size keyboard. Okay. So, yeah, thanks very much, Idyllic, for sending me these. I do apologize for it taking so long to get around to reviewing this. Uh, but obviously, got there in the end. Now, do check out that video from Idyllic because it does a far better job of explaining it and more examples than me with this one switch. Right, that's it. We're done. Thanks very much for checking out the video. Please hit that like, share, notification buttons. You know the drill. And of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.